Uh, my name is Dee Searle and I'm co-chair of Camping Green Party. Uh, the Green Party has been monitoring pollution in Camden for about seven years, um, but actually not getting very far. And then last summer, when King's College came out with their study that said that uh, about nearly 9,500 Londoners die every year with causes directly attributable to air pollution, we thought we needed to do something more locally. So for one thing to find out about, you know, you get a, a figure for London wide, but London's a big place, and we wanted to know what it meant for our communities. Uh, and we know that Camden is one of the uh, more polluted boroughs in the in the city, um, but also as well to then try to use that intelligence to help us come up with solutions. It's no point just scaring people, then actually what can we do about it? So we, we did, um, so we actually contacted um, um, Clean Air Networks and we started our air pollution monitoring almost exactly a year ago. And although I'm from the Green Party, we, we wanted it not to be party political because air pollution affects everybody. And so we worked as much as we could do with local groups. We put out various notes on social media and others. And in, in the end, both in the original project that we did a year ago and then subsequent ones, we had people from the uh, transition networks, but also uh, schools, but um, even some local arts projects, youth projects, individuals, neighbourhood forums, and things like that. So we've had a very wide range of people getting involved. And the great thing about the citizen science monitoring is that it is quite accessible. You know, people can, can do it. So it's a way of bringing this big science into, into your own communities, in your own hands, and finding out. So what we have here is the work in progress of the, one of the original projects we did a, a year ago. And that's in my neighbourhood where I live, uh, in Kentish Town and Gospel Oak. And these are what we did is we just, thanks to Clean Air Net Networks, had a big printout of the neighbourhood. And then we could see visually where we were going to put our, um, our monitors. And we, we, we uh, spoke with people who lived locally and then to see, you know, what, what should we do? Um, and we got, uh, when we got our results back, it was actually pretty scary because this figure here is 98 and it's outside Sainsbury's on our high street where lots of people go. It's a very busy high street. That was our highest. That is nearly two and a half times the European Union legal limit for nitrogen dioxide. Now, of course, all of these things, are, you know, there are uh, margins of error, but that is pretty a scary figure. And as you can see around here, that we have very few that actually are below that 40 microgram limit. And a lot of these are by schools. You know, this is 42 by a school, uh, 45 by a health centre, um, 54 by a sports centre where, where people go. But also what we did see, which was really fascinating, is that where some traffic management has been put in to cut traffic levels, you see a reduction. So for example, <coughs> here, that's 33, it's, it's quite close to a school there. Now around it is higher, and the reason is that on that street there is a, a contraflow that stops the main rat running. It, it makes it un, 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 uh, unpopular, uh, inconvenient to do. And so you can see that that <coughs> is actually lower than a lot of the roads around it. And that, that road, that's Hampstead Heath there. And see, that road is actually higher than here, which is quite, could be a busy road. So that gave us hope that we could do some more. And since then, we've covered um, almost all the borough, actually. We've got right down into the south here, did a, a monitoring project around near King's Cross. We've also had right over in the west, West Hampton, and even neighbouring boroughs, have, we've got, gone and spoken to them and helped. So we've got something going on in Kilburn and Kensal Rise and Harringay. So we're now starting to build a really good picture. Because the other thing is, is that air pollution, you can't really tackle it only locally. You have to work together, otherwise you can end up being a bit nimbyish, you know, we're not only concerned about air pollution, we're concerned about air pollution across the borough. And for everyone, you know, we don't want anyone's children to be growing up with, uh, with, with health effects because of that, or ourselves. So, so, we did, so we did this, and then we thought, well, what do we do next? So, um, could we have the next <laughs> image, please? <laughs> Right, yeah, that's really good. This includes um, 
the, the stuff that we did, but also some of the things that were done in 2013, and also some stuff done by uh, Hampstead Neighbourhood Forum as well. So we get started to get a, quite a good picture around. So, so what we were doing, once we got the results, we thought, well, actually, let's share them. So we, we had some big maps made. We produced newsletters to go out locally so people could look very much where they live in their local neighbourhoods. We also um, had maps like this made. We had uh, public meetings, street stalls, uh, and other actions as well. Um, also through some, some local schools taking, taking this on board to look at actually what, what sort of action can we take to make, to make a difference. So, so actually, could I have the next slide? Go on now, please. <coughs> and that's the one of the action, please. That's it, one with the children. This one? Yeah. So this is one of the actions, thanks to my colleague, Rachel, guessing one of our local primary schools, active, and children are great for, for getting on board with things like this. It's very active, and um, and you can and you can participate in. The school was very good, but so we did the nitrogen dioxide monitoring. But then we thought, well, actually, let's see what the particulates uh, levels are because they're they're equally important for uh, the health impact. And we had here a a particulates monitor that one of our uh, our team managed to get on trial from a local uh, from a uh, manufacturer that what he, he writes about uh, environmental technologies so we we got this and this was us setting off doing some of our particulates monitoring with children from the, the school and, and a local hairdresser who's very sympathetic we, we tried to work with local businesses about cutting pollution but what we discovered actually that the, the particulates monitors actually are quite hard for non-specialists to work and to, and to interpret the results. And they're also, they're not as clear as the nitrogen dioxide with those very clear legal limits. But what it did show is that we were starting to get some quite interesting correlations between where we had high nitrogen dioxide and also where, you know, where we had high particulates. And you could actually measure it. When a, you know, if a bus went by that was a clean bus, it only had a little blip on the screen. If you had one that was was an old fashioned kind of bus or a truck or a lorry, you could really see the increases. And also in the school where there was monitoring done, where over some train lines, again, you could see when a train went by. Um, so now we were kind of quite equipped with, with some basic knowledge. Um, and then we thought, well, actually, we want more to be done. So we uh, lobbied the, the candidates for uh, the mayoral election in London, and it's now actually become a priority. Um, and also our own local council, they've now had uh, our local MP, Keir Starmer, is making air pollution a priority. Um, we've had several public meetings, the council actually organised their own one, um, which was very well attended, it was packed, and lots of people were there that were, had um, actually, it's the first time they got involved in anything like this. And, and what we're also finding is that people are talking about air pollution. And you start realizing just in anecdotal conversations, people say, yes, I've got a constantly runny nose, or I feel like I've got hay fever the whole time. So you realize that people have got used to a certain level of, of air pollution, and we're starting to realize that things need to be done. So the question for us now is, is next steps. It's very good that because of nitrogen dioxide monitoring, and the major source of nitrogen dioxide is diesel vehicles, and that you know the mayor of London is, wants to get rid of them. He wants to, or he wants to put um, big surcharges on them. But the point is that nitrogen dioxide is, for one thing, uh, putting surcharges on is not the answer. Actually, we need to need to ban them because actually, in the end, people who've got more money will still will still drive around in their diesel cars. But also, nitrogen dioxide is only part of the story. To make our city and our neighbourhoods healthier, we have to cut vehicular traffic altogether, and other activities as well. We need to make sure they're as clean as possible. But it's vehicles that are a major source of both nitrogen dioxide and particulates. And in fact, particulates are, are not only equally uh, um, damaging to our health, some studies have shown that they're the major cause. And in fact, there was a study back in the summer that they, they thought they might even <coughs> lead to uh, a form, form of dementia. So we can't be lulled into a full sense of security. They go, oh, just because we're going to get diesel vehicles off our street, that's going to solve the problem. It's not. 
um, it's, it's a matter of actually getting, uh, cutting the number of vehicles dramatically, and that's going to be a combination of, of councils taking action, uh, governments taking action, but also individuals. So could I have the very last picture, please? I don't know if you can find. Okay, great. I'll explain what it is, and actually maybe our colleague who's pretending to be a tree mm -hmm. on our high street won't be too unhappy that she's not too visible. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, <coughs> it's not just about uh, equipping ourselves with knowledge, also possibly frightening ourselves a bit, it's about what can we do next. So, um, so we are of course doing the, the lobbying of the council, but we're also trying to, to change the way that we view our high streets, and not as you know, during the 1970s, in London particularly, a lot of cities, you know, if they were seem to be made safe for the car, let's make it nice and convenient. So things like this, a high street becomes a motorway, really. You know, traffic just goes down there, and they're not places that, that are healthy for people to linger. So what we're, we're trying to do is to change the way we think about our streets. So this is a project of our, our particular high street. has almost no trees on it at all. And that, that gives you a certain view of what your high street is. So we've got a beginning, beginning a project with local transitions townspeople, but we're broadening out to talk to uh, schools and also to businesses to get more trees on our high street. Not only because trees are actually good, and in fact some trees, such as London plane trees, will absorb particulars, but because it starts to change our view of what the high street is. We're also looking at introducing play streets, which again are another way of changing how we use streets. There are streets that have no traffic in there for children to play safely. And that's starting to take, uh, to, to, uh, to pull in kind of interest as well, and, and the council are even starting to talk about that. So I suppose our overall experience is that we kind of started small, we wanted to get more knowledge, but we did. We're all just amateurs in this, none of us are experts, but it just shows that the more people that you can get involved, you can actually change the minds of politicians and decision makers to, to do more stuff. And I think also, I think we just constantly have to be on, the, on our toes because to really make our cities healthy, it's going to have to change the way that we've viewed our cities for so, for so long. And I think we're just going to have to keep up the pressure because a lot of the decisions that will need to be taken might be unpopular for some parts of the community. And we're trying to say that, well, actually, yes, it might inconvenience motorists if they can't wrap around now and use this road. But actually, we're being inconvenienced a lot, and our children are being inconvenienced by dirty air. And we want to change the balance of what's the priority here? So it comes to the, the people that, that live in a place and work for that matter as well, rather than the people that want to drive through our neighbourhoods. Fantastic. Can you pass? Thank you.